I'm Steven Seagal, and I've been doing martial arts for 150 years, and that's what makes me the greatest Chicago detective in the world. Above the Law, released in 1988, it is directed by Andrew Davis, who is also behind such films like Stony Island, The Final Terror, Under Siege, The Fugitive, and Collateral Damage. And of course, this film is starring Steven Seagal, Pam Greer, Sharon Stone, Daniel Feraldo, and Henry Silva. And the reason why we're talking about Above the Law today is because it was a PayPal recommendation and donation from one of my contributors and supporters of this channel, Dr. Camp. Thank you very much. If any of you out there also want to be like Dr. Camp and help support this guy on YouTube, you can click the PayPal link that is on my homepage of my YouTube channel. Select the link. You can enter in any side donation you want to send my way. Send me your recommendation, and I'll give you a little shout-out just like what I did with Dr. Camp here. Thank you very much, Dr. Camp. And after watching this movie, I'm realizing that, thank God, even though I was born in Chicago, I didn't live in Chicago because I would have driven myself crazy if I would have developed this type of accent. Sergeant Nico Tosconi is the greatest Chicago martial arts detective in the world. And after studying martial arts his entire life, and after a brief stint in the CIA over in Nam, he decides to settle down and become a detective in the Chicago Police Department. Department, where he drives around all day busting up people's noses and popping everyone for drugs and stuff. Well, now he's kind of stumbled upon a big coup to kill a U.S. senator, and it turns out it's being run from the evil guy from Nam that he got into a disagreement at one time in the CIA with. Now it's up to Nico to protect his family and take down the crime lords, even if it means he needs to go above the law to do so. The movie came out in 1988, so it's as old as I am. I was born in 1988, and thank God that I wasn't, or that I didn't live through the 80s, because... It just, things got a little more complex as the years went on in the 90s and in the 2000s. In the 80s, people were very simple, and they wanted simple things. They wanted simple ideas in their movies. They wanted simple characters and simple plots. I'm gonna go to the movies, I don't wanna think about things. I just wanna sit back and watch a guy break people's necks and break people's hands and break people's noses like crazy, and I wanna make sure that he's a character on my police department in my city because that'll make me feel safe. This detective, Steven Seagal, will randomly appear in a bar somewhere where just randomly and when people are giving him lip or talking back to him he will bust their nose and beat them all up and then he'll go upstairs and save his niece from her boyfriend who she consensually is in a relationship with but because he does drugs that's bad he'll illegally tap someone's phone to get information of where drugs are going to be dropped off or c4 is going to be planted and then he'll show up there and bust everybody and then he gets all the accommodations and he gets all the credit for being a good cop and i love how this all builds to a brief little monologue that we get before the final credits start rolling about how these drug lords and these crime people and these politicians if they have too much power they're gonna end up working above the law and I'm thinking you just broke the law and worked above the law this entire time why isn't anyone taking you out we get the stereotypical you're suspended for being too much of a hothead on the police force scene in this movie where they call him out on him illegally tapping phones and beating up people in public so I'm like yeah I'm I'm behind you guys for ridiculing this man and suspending him because he really is the villain here. We shouldn't be hiring this type of person in our police force and our detective squads. He needs to act within the law. That is his job. But yet this entire movie, this person, even though he's claiming like, well, all of these crime lords are acting above the law, so it's okay if I do. He's acting above the law. He is bad. He is doing bad things. But it's Steven Seagal and his name is on the poster. His face is on the freaking poster. This poster is just a black background and him standing out from the shadows with the gun and it's <laughs> it's just Steven Seagal and that's the selling point of this movie. I was never really much of a Steven Seagal fan. I never understood the appeal. I do like a couple of his movies like Under Siege and you know that's 
it. Well, I guess executive decision, but he's only in that for like five minutes because he gets killed. So to see him attempt dramatic dialogue and to sound like he cares about people and how he's going to help the father of the Catholic Church take down whoever's trying to bully all of the immigrants living down in the basement. Yeah, he does a great job here. The man just screams action hero from the 1980s, where they never break a sweat, they never get dirty, they never get bloodied unless it's, like, extremely intentional. I don't think he ever has a scratch on him in this film, and yet he's, like, diving through windows, <laughs> through glass, he's having guns being constantly shot at him. There's a whole shootout in a hallway where he's trying to, you know, finally catch up with the guy from, from Nam who's doing all of his torture stuff here in the States nowadays. And you know it's nowadays because the guy has gray hair to show that time has passed. But in the shootout, his partner gets shot and to make it seem more melodramatic and more serious, they cut down to slow motion, but you can tell that the camera was not rolling at a high enough speed to warrant it being cut down to slow motion. So you just see jumping of the person falling down the stairs. But yet, Steven Seagal is still speaking in real time. Uh, Pam, no. This movie is just cheesy 80s action cop fun. If you love that stuff, awesome. For me, who's just grown up with so many other <laughs> different action films in this genre that are done so much better, with such better quality and such better performances that watch, going back and watching this one, it's just, uh, it, it was, it was an experience, I guess. Let's just call it that. This movie was an experience that I'm probably, <laughs> I have no bone in my body that wants, that is just craving to see this movie again or to see another Steven Seagal movie again. Whatever. I'm gonna give Above the Law one and a half out of five Blu-rays. No, sir. I didn't like it. So, guys, if you've seen Above the Law, what did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across it because of this video, then comment below. Let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell. See you all the next time I release Mixed Movie Review. So, guys, I will see you next time on the channel. But in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.